Hello everyone, uh, Snipe Trainer here. So I'm going to be doing my monthly recap of April. Um, last month uh, was a pretty challenging month for me. Uh, it was a great test of patience uh, because the the whole month I think it was really slow. Uh, especially on the small caps, there was like no volume, there was any runners, there wasn't any momentums in the small caps and it was uh, really difficult to trade and I changed my niche a lot uh, I started trading bigger caps large large caps and even started trading like after hours and pre-market so uh, isn't my go-to strategy but um, in the end um, it was a great challenge and pretty much tested my patience so um, if you um, don't know what I'm doing, so I usually go over my monthly recap and pretty much go over um, pretty much uh, things I did well and things to improve on. So I started on uh, February uh, and then I'm doing it for each month. Uh, and then for the um, next month, I usually put uh, the things to improve on into my uh, next month. Uh, to to give me a, some grading score on how I did on those things, those sad things. Um, and pretty much uh, I put all my p &L on the monthly calendar like this. So if you want to go into more details, I have videos on them uh, daily. So um, just choose a date and look at my um, video, his video archives and check in more details what went wrong or how did I um, make those profits so just going over my statistics here um, so the total monthly P&L for uh, month of April is 357 um, a total win is 1451 total loss is 1094 my max win day was um, 228 which was just last week um, my max loss day was pretty much last week as well, so um, you can see I probably started going into a larger size um, because uh, the market was low and pretty much when I'm stuck in some consolidation phase, I usually end up um, scaling up more uh, bigger position size and I end up getting more emotional because of the sizing and end up taking a bigger loss. Um, my average winner is um, $112 with an average loser of 137 so that turns out to be a 0.82 winner loss ratio so this one I want it to be you know at least greater than one or two um, a, a two to one ratio because um, you want to make more than um, your losses uh, so I ended up having a 62% winning days with a 13 days uh, win and uh, that makes a 9 day loss um, but pretty much just a $357 monthly win uh, much lower compared to last month uh, I made a total of 1700 um, and it was less days but I had uh, pretty much just one losing day um, and then month of February I made a thousand so this month was uh, pretty challenging, um, but uh, let's get started on um, the things to improve on from last month. So last month I had, um, I, I put, uh, do need to take profits and not to let a winning trade turn into a flat or a loss. So I think I've gotten better uh, with this. Because um, I think uh, the month of March, I uh, I end up getting po uh, being profit in a trade, and then ended up not stopping out and taking a loss instead. So um, I think um, the this month actually in May, I started to take it to take my uh, gainers uh, profits and stopping out flat on my either third or quarter size. So I'll 
give myself a C. Um, so anything with a C or worse, I would like to carry on to the next month and follow, um, follow the um, the same um, things to improve on. So it's a more a continuous improvement uh, metric. Um, so the next one is not to bottom trade or jump into low quality setup. So um, the month of April, well, I think I did this horribly. So I think I did a lot of boredom trading because the market was just slow and ended up trading just high, uh, high cap stocks and not just not trading my age. So I was giving myself a D, you know, so I did pretty poorly on that. Um, okay, so things I did well this uh, last month in April. Uh, I did stop out on a few tickers where it wasn't going my uh, direction. Um, but um, And then I also started implementing the stop order trigger. And this month, um, the last two days, I've been using that a lot to manage my size because uh, when you enter a stop order trigger, you have to put all your um, share size and uh, look at your stops. So I um, size in accordingly. Um, so that's why you see my kind of winnings are kind of in the 50s most of the time. Um, and then and my losing uh, sometimes it's part of the control because I add, but I my loss should be around twenty twenty five dollars. Um, okay, so things to improve on. So not to add to losing position. So I did this a few times uh, last month, and so like during the twenty sixth here and the twenty second, I probably added to losing position, and probably it you know a cup and handle fell to break down. Um, or break out and I add end up instead of stopping out I end up adding more so I need to focus on not to add to losing position and to bail out when my plan is failing um, so this is the same uh, stop out when it's not your own way um, so walk away and you're not giving back profits so a few days here um, it might be like this day here or uh, this day. Um, I, I probably ended up uh, positive in the morning um, and then probably positive $60 or $100 and I end up giving it all back uh, in the afternoon. So it's always good to just walk away and you don't have to over trade um, and just not to really focus. If I do trade in the afternoon uh, with a cushion I should be more diligent and not give away the profits that I earned uh, in the morning. Um, so the next one is lowering position sizing when poor trade. So poor quality setups. So I tend to, I think when the market is slow, I try to make a big trade when there was like uh, no setups so i end up going bigger size than i usually do and i i tend to have better success when i go smaller size so you can see here i i really uh this this was like smaller size and i guess it takes the emotional part out and not i'm um, going into two greater size and getting stopped out uh tighter uh, because you couldn't afford the risk but uh, I think if you size accordingly to your risk and what you're comfortable with, uh, that can definitely improve your uh, the psychology and your emotional and keep your emotional in check. Uh, waiting for setups. So yeah, so th this ties into a poor quality trading. Um, I need to really wait uh, patiently for those setups. So uh, the past two days, I think I did really good on that um, just because um, I've been seeing my uh, performance going down this uh, the last month and it has really affected my trading um, and trailing winners so this is something that I would like to improve on um, so when I'm trailing uh, when I'm in a winning trade I want to maximize it by letting it ride uh, maybe the five minute EMA or uh, let it have a, a 
nine minute, 50 minute uh, EMA crossover or something. Um, but I would like to try my winners more because it's not effective to have like big losses. And when you're, when you have a good winner, you just uh, take profits too early and you don't let your winner ride. Um, so yeah, overall, um, I have a lot of things to improve on this month. Uh, and I feel like uh, the momentum is finally coming back on uh, the beginning of uh, this month in May. So hopefully that continues and give you more opportunities. Um, but uh, yeah, month over month, uh, this was a pretty uh, um, bad performance overall. And I think I have lots to improve on. Uh, and hopefully I can carry these learning to um, next month. And um, we'll keep track of that. And hopefully next month I can reflect on these uh, improvements and hopefully you can get a better score on them. So um, as always, I would like everyone to thank you. Thanks for watching for my uh, monthly recap. And yeah, if you enjoy it um, and would like to watch my daily videos, um, don't forget to subscribe, like, and comment. Thank you, bye-bye.